Welcome back to CK2, and today we're looking at the random history and map generator for CK2, which as of 13 hours ago got an update to work with the latest CK2 patch. This is really exciting because this mod is awesome. So for those of you who don't know, this is a mod that sort of consists of two things. So the first part is an alternate history generation aspect, which allows you to take any CK2 map. It supports a whole bunch of mods and any custom map, and it would generate an alternate history for that particular map. So random provinces, random rulers, random religions, random cultures. And it also works with the base CK2 map, so if you want to change, you know, Europe up completely, you can do that. If you want to change well, any parts of it, really, it will do the whole world. Um, and you can also ha set a lot of different options, so if you want uh, quite stable kingdoms, if you want there to be a lot of war, you can adjust things like that. And it comes with a second feature, which is a full geography and map generator. So, the option to create your own custom maps very simply, literally at the push of a button. And there's also a huge drawing feature included with that, which allows you to draw your own map and tailor how you want it to look in terms of uh, climate and in terms of geography and elevation and things like that. I'll be showing both of these off in this video. I'll start with the alternate history and I'll end with the map generation. If you stay on right to the end, I'll show you how to initially set this up and some of the uh, more technical sides of things. This was originally created by a developer called uh, Yemli or Yemli. Uh, I, I'm going to go with Yemli who posted it about two years ago now and unfortunately didn't have time to work on the project in his own words and basically uploaded it so it was open source so that anybody could take over. And yesterday, this uh, thread was posted on Reddit, Mod Generator Working Edition is here, uh, by 252AFH, who has uploaded the file to GitHub. Now he does say in this post, he or she, uh, does say in this post that your antivirus won't like the EXE because the program is unsigned. However, I have, si I have uh, scanned it with malware bytes, Windows Defender, and Avast. All of it has come up as safe, containing no viruses and no malicious code. I also actually didn't get any errors when trying to run it. I didn't get any problems or windows thinking that it was a virus or anything like that. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But again, all the links to these threads uh, to the actual download page will be in the description below. Make sure you go and upvote this post and show the developer that this is more of what we want because this is uh, such a great mod. So before we go any further, I'll actually show you one of the two major features of this mod. So this is the first section, which is generating the alternate history side of the map. And this, here's one I've made earlier. Um, we have a sort of recreation of uh, Africa, Asia Minor, and um, Europe, obviously. And you can see this is the sort of thing you're going to end up with. Now, the actual variation in this mod is huge, and I'll show you why in one second, but this is just my first example of a map. We have some really interesting things going on here. If you look, we've got like this whole uh, Mediterranean country here, Kerylos, uh, with Jerusalem, Alexandria, and uh, Mecca as well, all in one kingdom. We've got this uh, weird North Sea Empire here, stretching across the entire German, and Dutch, and Danish, and French coast, which is very cool. We've sort of got this triple Spain. Um... Some very interesting things going on in this map, to be honest with you. And this is just one possibility out of, you know, infinite. Um, and if you have a look over here on the left-hand panel, we can see all the different counts, all the different kings and dukes and the vassals under them directly. So this guy's got some counts. This guy's got a duke with some counts. It's a very cool system, and it's very well built. You can also select single provinces to inspect them dynamically. So we'll have a look at Derika here. And we can see that the ruler of this province is Apunj uh, Wallon, of Dynasty Wallon. There we go. And uh, you can also have a look at his his liege, his colour. Um, and you've also got some other tools here. Uh, select, destroy, and conquer. Now, I don't know actually how to get destroy and conquer to work. I've done some messing around with it. And honestly, can't get it to work. But uh, I'm sure if I work these things out and any updates that come out to the program, I will do a follow-up video after I've poked around with it a lot more. But... We can also check out the various religions that have generated as well. So we can see there's quite a large uh, sort of African and Spanish religion here. Um, we've got this one all through the Arabian Desert. What about Scandinavia and the Mediterranean and southern parts of France and the Balt states here have their own uh, have their own religion. Very weird. And Scotland apparently has its own religion as well. And we can sort of see the religion and then sub-religions as well. So these religions will all be related somehow. And you can see the different religious rules that it's also generated for them. So if we had a look at uh, Quipold, for example, it does have a religious head. The religious head's name is the Itlon. Um, you're allowed three concubines. Uh, let's have a look. Matrilineal marriage is enabled. Religious intermarrying is enabled. You're allowed sibling marriage. Hey, you, you want some of that divine blood? We've got that going for you. You can also take a look at the culture map mode. And these are all the cultures that were related to one another. So all of these cultures here, for example... 
Um, the Indian subcontinent and into Afghanistan has all the same culture. Same with Africa and Europe. This is uh, very similar to the default um, cultures map mode in terms of the actual structure of it. But obviously the cultures are completely different and randomized. So when we take a look at uh, Northern England here, we can see that they're using the Muslim portraits. You can see the different uh, titles that they've got. So Baron Count, Duke, Emperor, King, Mayor. So if we head over, let's see if we can find one that doesn't have that. Maybe they all have that, and it just takes on the cultural name. And you can also see the, uh, this one's got Mesoamerican portraits. And you can also see the names that it's generated. So these are potential names for your children, uh, your rulers, random vassals, both male and female names. It's very well made, and it's incredibly well fleshed out. So, the reason this mod has so many permutations is you have the options to change within the map itself. So, if we go back to the political map mode here, because I think it looks the nicest... We can see that this map that I've generated in particular has uh, medium, kingdom, and empire stability. Now you can change that to very high, so they remain uh, pretty stalwart during wars and times of uh, conflict. They don't change very often, you know, other neighboring conquests don't really affect the structure of them. Uh, similar with empire stability, or you can set to none, which to my knowledge means they don't change from the very start. So this generates 400 years of history, as you can see here. And if we look in the chat box at the bottom, you can see all the different wars and things that have taken place through the history of this uh, alternate world. Now, if we set it to none, some of these wars would result in uh, the titles not changing. That's at least how I interpret it working from some of the testing I've done. You can also change the... Well, not in this version, but there is an option to change the religious and culture mutation option. So I assume if that is set to high... You will end up with more cultures and religions forming. If you set to low, you'll have uh, more sort of unified religions. So rather than, say, uh, Christian and Orthodox, you would have just Chasledonian. But unfortunately, that isn't implemented in this version. I can't actually remember if it was in the old 2.6.2 version. I'll have to go back and check that, and I'll put a note upon the screen or something. You've also got technology. Now, this is really interesting for me, because how often do you play a full game of CK2? So from 769 to the 15th century, for me... Never, I don't think. I don't think I've ever done that. At least I don't have the achievement for it. Um, so this is kind of cool because it means if you're going for those shorter games or maybe even multiplayer games where time takes a lot slower, you can set the tech advance speed to high and the tech spread speed to high and essentially have a more compact game. Same with holding development as well. Um, you get all of what you would get over that long period of time, but shorter. So it does suit multiplayer, like I said, or if you prefer those short form factor games. War. Uh, you can change the conquerors here, so how frequently provinces will change hands, how often they will get whole new dynasties, things like that. Again, mine was set to medium. But obviously you can see how many different options you can get and how different your worlds can be. So you could set stability to very low on all of these and wars to extremely high and have a very turbulent uh, world where titles are constantly changing hands and dynasties. It's really cool. I really, really like this and I think it's such a great idea. And when you're done with that, you can hit the export button. Caveat mTOR. Buyer beware that if you try and do this, there is a, uh, an error with what seems to be exclusively Windows 10 systems that unfortunately the generator doesn't seem to work. So once this is finished, there is a loading screen. You can't actually see it right now. Uh, OBS isn't capturing this either for whatever reason. Um, but during the export process, it just uh, crashes. You get an error log. The developer has responded to this and said that Hopefully by the end of this weekend, so I'm recording this on the 22nd, hopefully by the end of this weekend there will be a fix out for it and I will do a follow up video uh, addressing that. So yeah, there is uh, a broken file path here. We won't worry about that too much. Like I said, it's still a work in progress. Unfortunately it has been dormant for a couple of years so the, the developer really does have a lot of work set up for him but I do, I do appreciate the effort behind it. We'll take a look at the map generator next because this is absolutely my favorite feature and makes it really easy to make some really cool mods. So this is the map generator option and in here are two main different options. There is a fully random generator where you determine the size of the map, the amount of provinces and the type of climate. And then there is also the ability to draw your own map, uh, something like Microsoft Paint. But we'll go over the generator first because this is probably the most straightforward option for those of you who just want to get out a quick map. So you've got uh, the province account here determines how many provinces are going to be on the map so if you've got a low end pc you could do this and make your own very sort of very low small map size so that it runs faster for example or if you want a crazy huge map you could go very high and very large there'll be lots of small provinces on a huge map so that would be a really long quite intensive game for the purposes of this so i'm going to generate a normal province count map on a small size map 
And then we've got uh, different climate options. So planet is going to give you a north pole, a south pole, and an equator. Uh, north hemisphere is going to be more reminiscent of the default CK2 experience. Southern hemisphere, the opposite one would assume. Uh, temperate, a slightly colder map. So you'll have more forest, more farmland, things like that. And hot will be more deserts and basins. So we'll go with, why not? Let's go with the planet because that's different enough, right? Um, auto randomize. What would that do? Why is that a button? Surely it's also randomized anyway. I don't know. I want to find out what that is. I'll dig through the code and uh, do a follow-up. Uh, and I'll include that in the follow-up video, I should say. Um, so the seed is just the number you type in to determine the random nature. It's the number that the program will use to randomize it around. This means that if you want someone else to see the map type that you've generated, you can uh, give them the seed number and they can type that in. And in theory, assuming they've picked the same settings, they'll get the same map as you. Let's go ahead and generate it. Wow, what an ugly map. This is what our map looks like right now. And we'll just have a look at how... Um, Generating it differently will affect that. So we can see we've got uh, what I would argue is a much more planet-looking map here. Um, let's go for a larger map type here. So in theory, this would all be a cold section of map. This would be a cold section of map and much more than around the middle. I assume these are even deserts. Now, let's try very large. Okay, that didn't actually take too long. But what we're going to do is we're going to set back to normal because we want to generate it in full. Now, this is going to generate just the map data. So no provinces, no cultures, no religions, anything like that. So if you want to use this as the base for a different mod where you perf where you uh, custom tailor everything perfectly, then this is more ideal for you. We'll go ahead and hit generate full, and this will open a box where you can uh, determine where you want things to go. I'm going to put it in my generator vid folder because I think that makes the most sense, right? So go ahead and drop it in there. And this can take some time. As it says there, larger maps may affect performance. It may even stop responding, which it has done here, but it is still working. Don't worry about it. And when it's finally finished, that probably took me about five minutes for it to generate. It will look something like this, which is much more reminiscent of a CK2 map, funnily enough. Do you want to load this map to generate world history on? Now, if this is the map you're happy with and you want to use, you can click yes, and then the generator will use it as the base map uh, in order to add provinces and history and religions and cultures to it. I'm going to go ahead and say no, because I want to show off the drawing tool next. But this is very cool. So, as you can see here, we've got some mountain ranges, some deserts, uh, some, some big open plains here, uh, hills. It's a really cool idea for it. And again, if you want to change uh, the the climate type so it's more similar to base game CK2, you can go with North Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, or just keep generating land masses until you find one that you find uh, looks the most fun to play on. So we're going to go over to the draw map now. And this is essentially like using paint, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and rub out all this crap that I've done so far. And instead, we're going to draw something nice. Um, why don't we draw, here's what I think, okay, we're going to draw, uh, let's go for a smaller brush, sorry, let me just rub this out, those brushes were much larger than I thought they would be, let's go for a smaller brush, let's go, uh, land, and we're going to choose just a completely random shape, okay, just a completely random shape here, nothing inspired, alright, I think this would be a really fun map, to play CK2 on, right? So once you've done that, you can go ahead and you can add some extra details. So you might want to add uh, like a mountain here and some mountains down here. And, you know, in sort of like mountainy areas where you would expect mountains to be. Uh, oh, that kind of looks like a letter B. Weird that. Um, and then once you've done that, you can change here the randomness setting. So if you keep it to low, it, the generator will try and create a CK2 map based as closely to what you've drawn as possible. Set to medium, it'll add some variation and some randomness to it. So you might get some, you know, islands cropping up here and there. Or if it's set to high, it will keep this general shape but generate a shit ton of extra stuff around it. So we keep it to low. And we'll go ahead and we will hit the generate full again. Got to hit the generate button first. There we go. So that's what our map's going to look like. Uh, we've got a few islands here and there, you know, just below this island that weirdly looks like a K now that I notice it. If we go ahead and hit generate full again with the map name drawn map. Then it will uh, do as we did last time and generate in full again. So here is the finished product. Now I've got to admit, there's something about this I quite like. I can't put my finger on it. But when it's done, you do get the option to export it to the generator. And that's what I'm going to do now. And we're going to go ahead and generate a random world on our very unique and very interesting map. Alright, here we go. So we can see the uh, last two features of the map generator and the history generator combined into what could possibly be the greatest CK2 map ever made. So we can see here we've got uh, 
We've got our different various counts, our different various uh, kings, islands, rulers. Let's have a look here. The island of Quanion. Under one king, I would assume. Let's have a look at Quanion. Here we are. Uh, we've got dukes. So the dukes directly own the land, which is why a lot of counts haven't generated. But you can see these provinces here that have generated. Balamon Dana. Uh, we've got Lulan Kiasin. I, this, this island here is kind of cool. It's sort of in the middle of it. Uh, wow. Betalip is a, a huge province. So yeah, I think this is a really awesome map. So like I said earlier, there is one downside to this. And unfortunately, that is the fact that if we try and generate what could only be described as possibly the greatest CK2 Let's Play potential map ever... It unfortunately will come to an error and crash. But we do have those map files. So if you are competent or confident in creating your own CK2 mod. You can work from there and have these promises by yourself. But I'm going to save this. I'm going to save everything we've achieved today. Because I think we can all agree we have achieved a lot. And when the map generator is working. Like I said the dev is going to try and get something pushed out over the next few days. To fix the exporter. We will definitely be doing a series on this awesome map that we have in front of us. So for those of you still here who want some information on how to set things up, how to get it going, and how to find out your install directory, uh, it's fairly straightforward luckily. So you can see here on the screen is my Steam window. So to get this open, you want to go to CK2 in your Steam folder, right click on that, select properties, and it'll open up this window here. If you go ahead and click the browse local files option at the top of this window, that will open up your CK2 base directory and in the uh, top of that in the Windows directory bar. You want to copy that or make a note of it, memorize it, whatever you're going to do with that. That is the install directory you are going to need to type in to this box here. So for me, that was G, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, CK2. For you, that might be something closer to C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, CK2. That's the default install directory, but it again, depends on your operating system and there's lots of different factors to take into account. So the easiest way is to, like I said, go to Steam, browse local files, and paste in the result from there. Alternate map mod is for if you are running an alternate map mod, funnily enough. So something like Geheimnis Night, something like the Elder Kings, or something like this glorious map mod that we have created here. Um, this, for the most part, you're wanna, gonna wanna keep to vanilla map. So if you go ahead and copy in the same as you filled in in the top box. So for me again, that's G, Steam Library, Steam Maps, Common, CK2. It will load the default game map, as you can see here. Um, but again, obviously, if you want to mess around and do make a sub mod for Behind the Snack or the Outer Kings or a Game of Thrones, you can fill this into the mod directory. So that will be something more closer to my documents, Paradox Interactive, Crusader Kings 2 mod, and then slash, you know, Elder Kings or whatever it happens to be. That's generally how you set it up. Besides that, all you need to do is go over to the Generate tab and hit Start once you've fixed your settings. And then when you're done, you can change the mod name, so I'm just keeping it as a default, and hit Export. And that will export it to your CK2 mod folder, so you can quickly open the CK2 launcher, select it, and play the game. But like I said, unfortunately the exporter is broken right now, I'll do a follow-up video when that is finished. If you have any questions at all about any errors you're getting, any issues with the, with the mod itself or with the CK2 generation, leave me a comment. I will try and fix it where I can. There's no point us, you know, harassing the dev. He's got a lot to fix as it is, so I'll kind of help you where I can. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out on this. This is a really cool mod.